The goal of this webcast is to demonstrate, by comparing the pi MOs of cyclic benzene to those of linear hexatriene, that the cyclic array of 2pz orbitals in benzene is more stable than the linear array in hexatriene. What you'll see is that both the energies and nodal patterns of the pi MOs of benzene differ substantially from those of hexatriene in a way that contributes enhanced stability to benzene. Before we begin, I'd like to clarify the difference between what we'll call bonding and antibonding interactions within individual molecular orbitals. Bonding interactions take place between two adjacent orbitals with the same phase, that is, two adjacent orbitals shaded the same way. Bonding interactions stabilize molecular orbitals. Antibonding interactions take place between two adjacent lobes of opposite phase and destabilize molecular orbitals. Ultimately, we'll see that the number of bonding interactions in the filled MOs of benzene surpasses the number of bonding interactions in the filled MOs of hexatriene. This result would suggest that the electrons in benzene are more stable than those in hexatriene. Let's begin by applying this analysis to a compound we've explored already, hexatriene. The pi molecular orbitals of hexatriene increase in energy as the numbers of nodes in the orbitals increase. For each molecular orbital, let's identify the number of bonding and antibonding interactions. We'll calculate a net number of interactions for each level by subtracting the number of antibonding interactions from the number of bonding interactions. In the lowest level, we see that all the lobes have the same phase, leading to five bonding interactions. In the level above, we can see four bonding interactions symmetrically disposed about the center of the molecule and a single antibonding interaction in the center for a net of three bonding interactions. In the third MO, we see three bonding interactions here, here, and here, and two antibonding interactions here and here. Analogously, we can calculate the net number of antibonding interactions for the antibonding orbitals above the non-bonding line. As we increase in energy, the net number of antibonding interactions increases. In benzene, we see patterns of orbital energies and phases that differ radically from those of hexatriene. In the lowest level, all lobes possess the same phase. However, their cyclic arrangement leads to six bonding interactions now instead of five. Moving up in energy, we next see two levels at the same energy, called degenerate. Both of these levels possess one nodal plane. Using our strict definitions of bonding and antibonding interactions, we would expect a net of two bonding interactions in each of these MOs. As an example, in the right-hand orbital, we see two bonding interactions and no antibonding interactions. We could continue up in energy with benzene's antibonding molecular orbitals, but let's pause here and take stock of what we've done so far. In hexatriene, we've identified a total of nine net bonding interactions among all the filled molecular orbitals. In benzene, among its filled orbitals, we can count ten net bonding interactions total. What does this tell us? That the electrons in the filled orbitals of benzene are on the whole, more stable than those in hexatriene. The additional stability of these electrons helps explain why benzene is less reactive than most linear pi systems. We can even isolate the highest occupied and lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals and recognize that the homos of benzene with their extra bonding interaction are likely lower in energy and less reactive than the homo of hexatriene. Similarly, the LUMOs of benzene, which possess two antibonding interactions compared to hexatriene's LUMOs, one antibonding interaction, are likewise less reactive than the LUMO of hexatriene. 